Okay, so that's how you get your email account synced up with your phone. Oh, the other thing I put on there, um, any issues with TCTC uh, system, that's the uh, help desk number, 864-646-1779. Um, they're very nice. If you're very nice to them, if you're called down there with an attitude, then you're going to get an attitude back because they work in computer services and they have job security. So I wouldn't get an attitude with them because they'll give you one right back. And I, <laughs> I would too. Um, if you need help with My Labs Plus, now make sure you highlight what I put up there with what? home computer and my labs plus configuration or access code problems you type in your access code and it doesn't take it then you need to call that 1888 number okay if you have a mlp login issue with your username and password um, then you need to email those two people right there and say i'm having a problem getting on to my labs plus okay so anything having to do with your computer at tri-county tech or getting on to tri-county tech you call the help desk any problems with configuration of your home computer and my labs plus you call that 188 number and any login issues you um, email those two instructors Okay, um, there is one more thing. Um, now, first of all, I don't use Blackboard, but there is a link off of Blackboard. It's on the top, it's on the left-hand side. You hit that link, it says My Labs Plus, you hit it, it'll take you to that um, website where you can log on with your username and password. And after that, you can use um, you can just, I wouldn't use Blackboard because half the time it's down. You can use uh, www.tctc.mylabsplus.com. Save that on your desktop and you can go there and log on because half the time, like I say, um, when Blackboard's down, if you don't have that website, you can't get to um, My Labs Plus. So that's how you get to it. Now, notice nowhere did I say MyLabsPlus.com. Nowhere. So if you call me up or email me or text me and say, Hubert, I need a course ID, then I'm going to know you didn't read any of the handouts. And I'm going to know you just heard My Labs Plus and you went to MyLabsPlus.com where it will ask you for a course ID. Okay? And I'll say, well, look in your, look in your handouts. Because I'm not going to sit up here, and I know I'm speaking to the choir in this class because it's a small class and usually you don't have to. But with my big classes with 30 high, and 15 high schoolers in there, I ha I'm not going to repeat myself five times. And if I'm not going to do it there, I'm not going to do it in my other classes. So that's one of the things that I can't stand to do. I can't stand to repeat myself. So with that, um, make sure that you go to tctcmylabsplus.com or you go through your link on the left-hand side. You click on it one time, it takes you to My Labs Plus, and then you click on it again. And it should, should take you to that site right there. You'll know it says, it'll say Tri-County Technical College on it. If it doesn't say Tri-County Technical College, then you're at the wrong place. Okay? So make sure you make those notes. Now, I sent out several emails, and the first one I sent out, because I knew some of y'all was having heart attacks, and, oh, I haven't heard from my teacher. We have some of those students. And then the second one I sent out after drop ad week, which was last week, and it didn't do right. The uh, when I attached the files, it didn't 
it didn't work right, so I sent out a third email, which went out, I think, yesterday afternoon. So you should have gotten those three emails. You should have your handouts and everything. All right? I'm going to say this, and I don't care if I hurt your feelings. It's 2018. Get with the, get with the program, okay? Get your email synced and start checking it. Because this thing of saying, oh, I haven't checked my email, that's not cute anymore. All right? It's just advertising that you're behind. Okay? I don't put up with that. And, you know, when we first had email, that was cute, but it's not cute anymore. Or you're going to come up here, like I say, and there's not going to be a classroom, and you're going to say, oh, I'm mad at Hubert because he didn't let me know. No, you just don't check your email. So either get it synced with your phone or check it. At least check it before you come to class, okay? And that's true with all your um, classes, okay? Because I get so many students, and then they turn around and they they don't they don't fuss at me because they know they're going to get it right back. What they do is they go to my department head and say he didn't even let me know, and she knows better than that because she knows I send out emails and text for everything I do. So she said, "Did you send out an email? Yes, yeah, sent it out yesterday morning." So anyway, I'm I'm getting that's getting a little bit old. I'm getting a little bit sick of it, and uh, get with the program. Like I say, it's 2018. We just turned into another year, and we got people going up to the moon and stuff and space stations. Just get with the program. It's not cute anymore. All right. Next next uh, set of uh, handouts, we'll go ahead and get the um, – there we go. Let me get rid of this. There it is. Uh, first thing I'm going to pull out is a little bit about me. Now, there's a reason I pull this up. I don't pull it up because I'm conceited or whatever you want to call it, cocky or I don't know what you want to call it. Everything I do in here is for a reason. And one reason I, well, actually, the story behind this is we used to, I don't know, some of y'all may have went to school a long time ago. And you used to write down information about yourself on an index card and give it to the instructor. Well, we, I quit doing it because people screwed it up. Something as easy as writing information about yourself. So I just quit doing it. But I used to do this, and I'd give them, I'd hand this out when they'd hand me their, their index card because I thought if I'm going to ask you for that information, I might as well give you that information about me. Um, so I'm very reciprocating. If, if I treat students the way I want to be treated, if I'm going to ask you of something, then I should give you that back. Um, I think it's very important. So I, I wrote down all this generically, wrote it down, you know, when we started, when I started teaching. Some of it I had to add on as I went along because I think it's very important for a environment of a classroom to be comfortable. I think it's very important for a Com uh, for the classroom to be comfortable for the students to interact with the teacher and the teacher to interact with the students. This is a small class, so it should be okay unless y'all are what all those like sit there like this and there's no, you know, there's no, you just sit there. And I hope y'all are not that way. Um, the way to get in contact with me, and that's why, I, and there's a story behind this too. There is my contact information. Now, I want you to, uh, and I even give you my snail mail, okay? There is, and, and also I had to put it up here, but my, there's my cell phone email. Now, this brings up another, not a raw nerve, but a, a nerve that's just been touched, okay? And that is this last semester, after, I want everybody to, to get this, I said after, grade turning. Grade turning in is about three, four days after the last day of exams. Everybody know that? All right. About three, four days after grade turning in, I mean, after the test, we are supposed to turn in our grades. 
So I get three emails or texts after grade turning. Guess what they were telling me? Oh, I was absent the last week of class because I had 15 dead grandmothers. And I had six flat tires and I had the house blew up and all this stuff y'all come up with. Okay? Let me ask you a question. How many of y'all in here work? Have a job, part time? All right, I'm going to pick on you. Where do you work? I work at East Fashion Metro. Do the what? East Fashion Metro. All right, where do you work? Papa John's. Papa John's. All these places that have food and, and good stuff, I'm going to come by there and get free stuff. Okay? Mm -hmm. Where do you work? Smith Brothers. Smith Brothers. Incoming message. Huh? Journeys. Journey. What the heck? Journey. It's a shoe store in the mall. It's a what store? A shoe store. Oh, okay. I don't go to the mall. Yeah. I have an Amazon. I don't. Yeah. The, the less I go, the less I go in town, the better mood I'm in. I feel that. Sam's Club. Sam's Club. Okay. Cafe. Okay. King's Cafe. Southeast. Southeast. Truck driver. Lowe's. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, I'm going to pick on you because you drive, you drive a truck or load trucks or whatever, and that's a pretty big company, right? Let's say you miss next week of work. You miss all week. And then you come back to work and you tell your boss why you missed. What happened? Why? I don't know. I miss work. Call in. You know what? Don't call in. Before, right? Yeah. Or when it's a day. You don't call you don't call me during great turn in to tell me you had fifteen dead grandmothers. Okay? I'm exaggerating because I had a student tell me they had the one semester he had a dead grandmother and the next semester he had two dead grandmothers. Okay? Now I realize there's there's a way you can have three dead grandmothers. Come on. All right. Anyway, the whole point is Y'all come up with some doozies, okay? And when I say y'all, I don't mean you in here. I mean students. Don't do that. Because, and then they had the mothers, the helicopter parents. Then they called in. I don't understand why you don't give my child a chance to, I didn't reply. So eventually, because I don't have to, <laughs> parents, I don't have to answer to them, okay? So then, of course, guess what? My department head gets an email. My department head sent me the carbon copy and said, I know for a fact that Hubert McClure gives out his emails, his cell numbers, and his home phone number. And I know for a fact that if you missed this test and Hubert did not give you a chance, then you didn't tell him about it. And I never did have to fool with it after that. Because... I have been doing this for, I was one of the first people on the campus to give students my cell phone. Okay? You have to open up communication. If you don't have communication both ways, squeaky door gets what? Grease. If students don't ask questions, I don't answer. If you don't tell me what's going on, if you're going to be absent, I don't care about, now, now, now some of y'all that, I don't need to know everything, Okay? But I just need to know if you're going to be absent for like a week, okay, like during final exams, all right? That's why all that's up there. So I don't want to hear this. Um, and then somebody says, oh, well, if, if you have a wreck, okay, well, let me ask you a question since, you, since I'm picking on you. Do um, you have a wife, girlfriend, or mom or dad? You got a mom and dad, right? All right. If you were in a wreck, what would your mom and dad do, probably, if they would sit beside you at the hospital? What would they do if you couldn't use the phone? Right. Exactly. And how many of your mother and father did the same thing? Okay. You see why I'm having a problem with these three people? If they had a funeral, or if they were in, uh, if they were in a coma or whatever, don't you think somebody should have called Tri-County? Like the mom or the father? Yeah. Anytime you're going to miss a test, anytime you're going to miss a whole week of class, you somebody is you treat this class just like your job. You call, or you email, or you text, or whatever. I hate to have to go through that, but 
there's kind of an attitude changing it's been in the last 10 years that, and I don't know what you call it, but if I sit in the classroom all semester, I get a C. No, that ain't the way it works. Incoming if you don't message. do your job in the real world, you get what? Fired. And you can try to sue and you can try to grieve and you can try to do all this crap. If you don't do your job, you get fired. And if you don't pull your weight in this class, you get an F. Okay? I'm not, I'm, you can check, you can check with other people. You can check on rate my professor. I have to be this way the first week of class because y'all, you students, you know, y'all think that y'all can do this stuff and you can't. Okay? So after the first week, after I get all this stuff out of the way, we have a pretty good time in here. But anyway, um, make sure you uh, make sure you write down at least the best ways to contact me. What are the best ways to contact me? The best way to contact me is my cell number. Why? Well, all of these come to where? My office or my phone? Both. But I'm hardly ever in my office. I'm usually in here. Okay, because I'm working on this new class that we're doing with the Polycom, with the 3D camera and the two two campuses. Priority one message. Kind of like a, priority one message. Sorry, priority it's kind of like what's you, what do you call those things tab. on TV where you have meetings over the phone? Teleconference, something like that. Yes, Hubert. No, Hubert. Thank you for interacting, class. Y'all, y'all don't know what a teleconference is. Go to meeting.com. Y'all ever heard that on the radio? Okay, well, that's what it is. Easley Campus, Pendleton Campus, and Anderson Campus is sitting here, and I teach on that board, and it transmits to the screens at their schools. So it's kind of a, the, the newest thing in online classes, and students can also Skype in, and we'll talk about that also. Um, like I said, I'm not a T-Rex. I'm the other end of the spectrum. I'm the guy that's the technical geek, all right? So... That's something new we're doing. This is our third semester doing it. All right. There's a little bit of information about me. The only reason I put that Priority information... One message coming in on secure channel. Students is students. They're, they've got my... It's, I thought I had this on vibrate. The students are, are reading the handouts, and they're adding my... One of my... This, this teleconference class, I tell students to uh, email me. I mean, text me so I can put them in a group, a text group. So if, if one of the, if one of the uh, TVs go down or something, they can text me right quick so we'll know. That's why, that's why, I'm, that's why it's going off. They're reading their handouts and sending it, sending it in. All right. I think it's very important that you know a little bit about me. Born and raised here in Anderson, all that good stuff. I'm not, I didn't go to Yale. I didn't go to Harvard. I didn't have a silver spoon. I didn't have any of that. So I don't want, I, I like to get all that out. The other end of the spectrum is the teacher that you have and you walk out after an hour and a half and you have no idea what their name is. I'm the, I'm the opposite of that, okay? So that's that handout. Now, if you notice, it says, I even give you what? Not only do I give you my office, I give you what? Directions how to get there. Now, once I covered something on a handout, that means you, what, know it. So that means don't ask me again, okay? Because I'll say I have no idea. If I say I have no idea, that means, or I don't respond to your text or email, that means look in your handout, okay? Second floor, directly left of elevator. You turn into, the, you go into that room right beside the elevator. Last office on the left in the corner. If you don't know where the last office in the left is like you do in the hotel, and you're looking for room 220, you see 214, you two, sit 216, you know it's right down the hallway. Well, same thing there, mine's 211. You look for 208 and 209, all right? Then you follow 208 and 209, and you'll get there. Yeah, I have to tell people how to get to my office because they use that. Oh, I don't know how to get to your office. You never did tell us. Whatever. All right, now, next question I usually get is, Hubert, when are you in your office? Well, that's when I give you the locator card. 
And the locator card, where is it? It should be in here somewhere. There it is. Pull that out. There it is. So, what question will I not answer now? When are you in your office? When's your office hours? I have no idea. I'm a bastard, I know. But I'm just giving you the same thing you would give me if I kept asking you the same questions over and over and over. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? You get tired of it, would you? I get tired of these same questions. Okay? Oh, there's my phone number. My office that I'm never sitting in. I'm always in here. Okay? Um, there's my email address. There's my schedule. Y'all are down here at 12 o'clock. But I'm here at 9.30. I'm here at 8 on Tuesday and Thursday. I don't have class. Most of my office hours are here. That course that I'm telling you about with the TVs, that's the Polycom class right there. So all of my classes are in 202 uh, because basically this is my room because I did Polycom class. So I just put all my classes in here. All right. Um, now, you notice there's nothing at 8 o'clock. Well, I have a son, and I have to hit him upside the head to get him out of bed and all that stuff and beat him and all that stuff, you know, DSS. I have to get him out of bed and get him to class by 8 o'clock. So sometimes I'm a little bit late, so I don't even put office hours at 8 o'clock. That's because uh, y'all are not here either. Y'all are coming in half dragging. So I know you don't want to have office hours at 8 o'clock. So anyway, make a long story short, there's my office hours. Now, if you live in BFE, South Ida, Lounsville, Tomasi Salem, BHP, okay? If you live in those places, do you travel 45 minutes and not knowing if somebody's there or not? No. So don't do that with me. If you got office hours, first of all, you ought to Skype in. I can Skype in and we can do them with the document cam here. And do, it over, do it over the phone, okay? Do it over Skype. Um, if you come in from one of those places, then you need to call, text me, and say, are you going to be in your office from 2 to 4? Probably not, but if you need me to be, I will, okay? One good thing about my class is I take all this stuff, this homework and test and paperwork that all these other teachers do, it's out. It's not even in the classroom, all right? And what does that leave me to do? Teach. What a concept. Teach for an hour and a half. What a concept. And just teach one thing, okay? So most of my time, my first 15, 20 minutes of class may be questions that you send in to me through Ask My Instructor. We'll go over that Wednesday, okay? Um, the Ask My Instructor, that's the grease that I'm talking about with y'all on the door. If you don't send me questions, I'm going to assume what? That you understand the material, and I'm going to keep on going. If you send me a bunch of questions, I'm going, whoa, way back. We've, we've got to go over this again, all right? So if you don't tell me, you don't, now, I'm going to put off my homework until right before the test. Well, we've already covered that homework. If you have any questions, I don't know when you're going to ask it because the test is starting. Oh, well, I'll ask it next time. No, we're going to be in the next unit. So don't do your homework at the end because you're not going to have time to ask questions. Okay? Questions about that? So now you know how to get in contact with me, you know where to get in contact with me, and you know when to get in contact with me. So that takes away all of those what? Excuses. Questions so far? Some of y'all are scared to death. I'm not going to be this way during the whole semester. Okay? Just to slay the first week. I don't know if you've gotten that, but that's the uh, My Labs Plus. Um, that's just another way of telling you how to get to My Labs Plus. Make sure you print that out. Um, make sure you write that 188 number on that page right there. 
because that's what, who you would call. Now, also, I want you to highlight, if you've got this one, highlight this one right here, the preferred browser. Now, this is where you're going to see if there's a problem with your home computer in my lab plus. Let's say if you go to, you go home and you got a laptop or tabletop set up or with a monitor or whatever, and you don't carry it around. It stays at home 90% of the time. You go in there and you pull up your homework and there's nothing but a white screen. You got the My Lab Plus border and you got, but there's nothing there. Then you've got a configuration problem between your computer and My Lab Plus. 1888 number. Not Hubert. Not the teachers that I gave you their email addresses, not the help desk. That is a configuration problem. Probably because you're either using the wrong search engine or you have malware or software protection that is enabled that's not letting you, that's not letting my lab plus work right. Okay? So there's two or three things you can do. One, you can switch to another. Um, search engine. That usually takes care of it. And sometimes you just have to switch. If you use Google all the time and one day you go in there and what's wrong? It's white screen. Then switch over to the other one, Mozilla Firefox. Chances are, really, I don't know why, but that's what a lot of students are starting to do. Whenever they have a problem, they just switch over to the other. Some of them have even switched to Internet Explorer and it worked. And then it says right there, do not use Internet Explorer. I wouldn't I would use Google Chrome because I've seen Google Chrome work the best. Um, now, so that's one thing you can do, switch search engines. Next thing you can do is come up here the next day and see if it's working with your account in the lab. If it doesn't work, if it works fine down in the lab with your account when you log on, then there's something wrong with your configuration. And then you need to call Geek Squad or you need to call the My Labs Plus people and say, look, I've done it in the lab, it works. I've done it, you know, I've, I've switched all three, it still gives me a white screen. There's something wrong, something that's conflicting with something. And what it's doing is conflicting with your malware or your security programs on your computer. That's probably what's happening. Those three things, 90% of the time, those three things will take care of it. So you need to either know your computer or you need to call the 188 number if you're still running into it. Okay? And that's what that handout's for. Hubert's class courtesies. Now, I don't know how many of you have had me for, and I don't think I've had anybody in here. Nope. Um, then you can ask around or go to rate my professor or whatever. But I guarantee you there's nobody on any of those avenues that's going to tell you I've been unfair to them unless they're just lazy or obnoxious punk, one of the two. All right? I treat students the way I want to be treated. Again, I'm reciprocal. I do reciprocate. If you're not going to interact with me, I'm not going to interact with you. If you're going to treat me disrespectful, I'm going to treat you disrespectful. Not really. I'm going to call security and get you hauled out of here. All right? Um, if you try to embarrass me, I will embarrass you in front of everybody. But I've never had to do that. Three students in 20 years. Three. And it says that somewhere on one of these handouts. And you're talking about seven to 8,000 students I've taught. Three I've had to ask to leave. And they had they had issues with discrepancies on self discrepancies or something. I don't know. They just had issues. Okay. Cell phones. My cell phone went off. My cell phone always goes off. All right. I try to set it on vibrate, but yeah, that's a student. Um, Y'all didn't go into cardio infarction when my cell phone went off, and neither will I. Okay. I'm not like some of these teachers need a life. Okay. If your phone goes off, fine. My son goes to McAleese, my daughter's at College of Charleston, and my mama it says mama, okay? If one of those three, my mama calls all the time. But anyway, if one of those three goes off, I'm going to have to answer it. 
because something's wrong. All right? Same thing for y'all. If you get a text or a phone from daycare or a phone from your spouse's work or whatever, and you know that it's out of the ordinary, then just go outside in the hallway and answer or text back. But just don't do it in here. Okay? I won't. Okay? I will say I have to get this. But that is very rare. Unless my son does something or gets sick at Mackley's, I don't have to worry about it. My daughter, at least she stays off the interstate. I don't have to worry about her. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So on the cell phone and the texting, just think about this. What if you come up to my desk at the end of class and you ask me about doing a, explaining a homework question to you and while you're asking questions, I'm texting. What is that? What is it? Come on, say it. It's disrespectful. So if I'm doing that to you, what is it when you do it to me when I'm writing on the board? It's disrespectful. And if you put it like that, people think about it a little bit more. Okay? You don't want to go up and ask me a question and I ignore you by texting. Think about it. Would you like that done to you? All right. This is not an online class. What I do, and I've been doing these classes since 1996, 97, because I was doing them on little three and a half disc, all right? And I was having my students do the classes, and we I have four or five computers in the classroom. You just don't know, all right? There was one time I had a classroom, I had two computers in it, all right? This was way back, and they were laughing at me. But now, the whole department's using them, or they should be. But anyway, what it, what, the whole purpose for my lab plus is two things. One is to get all of the grading and all of the input out of the teacher's hands for two reasons. One is for paperwork and the other one is for bias. Okay? The good thing about my Labs plus, it doesn't notice your gender, it doesn't notice your color, it doesn't notice all the other stuff that we're different about. Blonde hair. Brunette, redhead, whoever's redhead, I don't know. Okay? Brown eyes, blue eyes, doesn't matter. If you flunk, you're flunking because what? Awesome. You didn't do the work. Okay? So nobody can, and I've been teaching here for 20 years, nobody has ever said I've what? Misjudged or whatever. Prejudice. It's prejudiced or anything like that. Why? Because. I don't grade their papers. And another thing is, it frees me up to do nothing but what? Teach. And you send me feedback, I go over your questions. Technically, I have office hours in my classroom. And I don't have very many office hours because I cover the material. Okay? So that's why this is not online class, but part of it's your time. Okay? Attendance. And you need to make a note of this. Tri-County Tech, two or three years ago, decided that we need to take attendance, even in online classes. And it wasn't Tri-County Tech, it was financial aid that pushed it. Okay? So, we have to take attendance. I'm going to pass this little sheet around. I only do this for the first two weeks, because that's when dropping is so important, the first two weeks. So... I get people to initialize. That way, at the end of the semester, you can't say you never did a 10 because you got your signature right here. Okay? So right now, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We're missing two people. Just under the 8th of January, put your initials in that box right beside your T number. If your name's not on there, add it at the bottom and sign your name, put your T number also, and I'll make sure. I ran those off like yesterday, so if you added between yesterday afternoon and today, then I probably don't have you on there. Okay? Attendance policy. Um, I could care less. Okay? Not that I don't care about you. Um, after, after I go through these speeches the first couple of days, I do care about you, but I don't care about knowing everything about you, okay? Uh, some of you come in here and tell me about your dog dying. I don't, I don't really care about dogs anyway. But anyway, I'm a cat person, so I don't care about dogs. 
Uh, my mother loves enough dogs for both of us. I ain't got no use for no dog. But anyway, um, if you cross the threshold of that door, then and and I count you here. You can go and do whatever you need to do. You need to go to work, or if you need to, but just come into the door. Come over the door. If you Skype in, I'll I'll take that as a I'll take that as a present. But I do not let students do it every day. Okay. More than two, more than two consecutive days, you need to let me know why. Okay. Um, and if your kids are sick, that's an emergency. Cars broke down, you had a wreck, that's an emergency. Emergencies, I don't have in mind, but if you're just calling in because you don't want to come up here, that's just lazy. Okay? So I don't want you to take advantage of it. And just remember, any privilege you take advantage of it, what's going to be what's what's going to happen? Privilege is going to go away. And I do it as a privilege for those students that have families and stuff. That's why I do the Skype. Now we're going to talk about how to load Skype and do all that in just a minute. But anyway, two ways I'll accept you if you're not here. One, coming over the threshold, letting me know, I'll check you off on the attendance, or Skyping in, okay? And after about the first four or five weeks, I could really care, I, I really don't take much, I just say everybody's here, as long as I count, I don't really care about it after that. And Tri-County really don't, it's the first couple of weeks, really, that they care because of the financial aid. Because now, these people that have initialed right here can't say they didn't attend the class. You see what I'm saying? You did attend the class. Now, the two people that didn't, if they drop later on, or if I drop them later on, they can't say, I can't, you know, Tri-County will go, well, did they show up? And I'll say no, because they didn't sign it. That's what this is for. So, that's for that. So far, we've got... Everybody but two people. Kids and Rowmaker. Rowmaker? Okay. All right. Next, and you can read the rest of that. I generalize when I speak, and I learn to look in a certain direction. Right now, you three are in my line of sight. That's where I usually look. So if you don't like me looking at you, you need to move. Okay, move over there. Okay, but that's my line of sight with me standing up here. All right? So, but I say y'all all the time. If I say y'all, that means all 150 something of my students. And those students out in the hallway and just students in general. Doesn't mean that I sit at home and say, well, he talks about the 155 class all the time. No, I don't. I generalize when I speak. Okay? And that's a little bit about me, what I hate and what I like, and that kind of thing. So I'm not gonna go into that. Y'all can read that. Capish? How to access Hubert's videos, okay? Look for that uh, handout. It's somewhere in there. How to access Hubert's videos. This is, I'm going to tell you another story. Another Ask Clown story. I had a Math 110 online last semester. Okay? Now, I have been, I have been recording my classes for the last five years. So all of my Math 110s that I've been teaching for the last five years are on that YouTube site. At the beginning of the semester, I send out two, well, this one right here, and then I send out an online letter to the online students, giving them the link to the last Math 110 I taught, which was like two semesters of spring, it was a year ago. All right? I did that with the 110 class. I gave them this handout, and I gave them the handout that says to the Math 110 students, if you want to look at last spring's Math 110 videos, you go to this link and go in chronological order. I had two people put on my evaluation. Okay, I do read my evaluations. Two that said that I had no videos to support the Math 110 online class, and I should have videos to support the Math 110 online class. They just put a big sign around their neck that said they didn't read what? They didn't read the handouts. See, I know who's read the handouts and who hasn't. By the questions you ask and by the comments that you make. I know who has read and who hasn't read the handout. You have 15 questions on each unit test that come from the handouts and come from syllabus. 
So they're on each unit test, and they're very easy. But if you don't know, well, you pretty much can get them right, even if you don't have a clue. Because I put the answers, the multiple choice answers are really stupid. Okay? And if you miss, if you, like, there's three of them stupid, and one of them is the right answer. So it's kind of hard to make, it's kind of hard to miss them. But people do miss them. Just like the other day, I saw somebody put on Facebook. I uh, went to the so and so store, and I was checking out, and my total was 1776. And I said, that was a good year. And the cashier said, what happened in 1776? These people procreate. They have driver's license. What happened in 1776? That's like one of my students came up to me one semester and they complained, okay? Are you with me? A bonus question. You with me? Bonus question. They complained about the bonus question because I referred to 9-11. My brother's cousin's aunt, sister's wife's husband's brother-in-law's cousin died, and I'm offended. I said, well, why weren't you offended about December 7, 1941? It's in the same question. What happened then? Or then? Didn't even know what happened December 4, 19, or December 7, 1941. The day that will live what? In infamy. What happened? Her harbor was invaded, but she wasn't offended about that. If you're going to be offended about one day, you've got to be offended by both days, all right? Know your, know your history, okay, before you come up to me and, oh, these, those kind of people, I can't, it's, it's very difficult for me. That's why I don't work with the public very well. I have to be in the classroom. I can't work with the public. Anyway, that's how you access my email. I meant my YouTube. You go to YouTube. You do a search for Hubert McClure. Click on the picture of me with a blue shirt. Now, if you're colorblind, you need to get somebody to help you, all right? A blue shirt. There's only two pictures on there. The, the green shirt was when I did virtual office hours for a class, and they would call in their questions. They would email me questions, and I would do the questions on a Word document and send it to them and put it on YouTube. That, that, that's when I first started doing this a long time ago. Um, Click on blue shirt, middle of the page, click on created playlist. Sometimes it says library. Okay, it says created playlist or library. Click on the class you want to watch. After today, I will load this video up today. And it'll say first day, math 155, first day, which first days go over classroom logistics, second day goes over my labs plus and homework and test. Okay, so the second day, you'll say, Second day, math 155, second day, and it goes in that order, all right? Every once in a while, something happens, and it, I don't know, it doesn't load right or whatever, but that's usually very rare. Uh, most of the time, and since I got this classroom to myself, it's not like I'm going to have anybody coming in and rushing me, so I should load it every day after class. What time does this class end? 2.10. 2.10. Yeah, because yeah, I've got to pick up my son right after that. So I'll probably, we have to, we're going to have to stop at 2. So I'll take that 10 minutes and load that video and then get out of here. Um, anyway, so that's how you get that. So well, why would you look? Well, some of you may want to, let's say I'm going over 4.3 and you didn't get it. So you look over today's video and you still don't get it. Well, go back to Math 155 last year and pull up 4.2 or 4.3 and look at it then. I might have done something different. I might have went over a different problem, okay? That's what you use the videos for, when you miss or when you need to reinforce, okay? Now, it's kind of like a gun or something else. You'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. You know what I'm talking about? A gun, you'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Okay. Well, same thing with videos. If I quit doing the videos tomorrow, at the end of the semester, you know what somebody's going to suggest I do? Put videos in my classes on YouTube. Okay, if I don't have them, you're going to what? You're going to ask for them. If I do have them, you're not going to use them. So I might as well have them just in case you need them. All right? And that's why I've been doing them for the last five years. I used to have a tripod. Still got it in my office. I used to have a tripod with a video camera. 
And it just used to be zoomed in on this whiteboard, which was like that back then. And then I pushed and pushed to get these. And then now, my, my, the, the goal is to have three TVs up here. A Hewlett Packard Clever Touch type board here where I could do the, we wouldn't have that. And then have that, the, these two on each side. That way, you wouldn't have any of this stuff in here except for the boards. Uh, that's all you would have because everything would be run by this board right here in the middle. So that's the next thing that's coming. You're going to go into a classroom and there's going to be a TV screen on one side, a TV screen on the other, and a, a big 57-inch, what do you call them things, y'all carry around an iPad. That's what's going to be hanging on the wall in the middle. That's the next classroom. But anyway... How to Skype in on Hubert's class? Well, there's a, video, there's, a, there's a handout in your handouts, and this one, that tells you how to get to your Office 365 and get five installations for free. You can install it on your cell phone, install it on your iPad, install it on your tabletop, install it on your laptop, install it on your Office computer, whatever you want to do. With Office, you get everything. Including what? Skype for business. Now, I want everybody to highlight this or put it in your notebook. It's not Skype. It's Skype what? Skype for business, Hubert. Thank you, class. Okay. Skype for business is where you can come into a meeting, which is class, or you can talk to one another, either one. Now, let's say that you have a cold and you feel like crap, or you got the flu, or your kids got the flu, or the dog died, or the house blew up, or whatever, and you want to come to class, but you can't because the you got five flat tires on the truck. Okay? Then all you need to do is just text me and say, Hubert, I need to Skype in today. Please invite me, and then put uh, your name. George Smith, okay? Then about five minutes after class, or five minutes before I start, I'll bring you in and invite you into the class through Skype. What I got pulled up and recording on right now, I'll pull you up. Now, you can have your video turned on, or you can have it turned off. But at the beginning, you have to have it turned on so I can say, okay, that's you and not your mother-in-law or your mother or your brother, or, you know, calling in. I got to see you before I can give you your present. All right, it's not a big deal, but anyway, so don't be, uh, <laughs> oh my God, one semester, <laughs> this one chick, she, ca she called in, and they, oh my God, they had a fight, and she forgot that the Skype was on, and it was awful. <laughs> the, the boyfriend or the husband said that she was Skyping with her boyfriend or something. He, he sounded like he had issues because it was just a classroom. I said, uh, you need to bite your, uh, they didn't hear me. So finally, I just cut them out of the, I hope she, she, she was all right because later she came back to class and apologized. But I said, you don't need to apologize. You need to fix that situation. And I think she understood what I meant by fix. I, was, I mean, she was just Skyping the classroom, and he was accusing her of doing all this. And, huh. Anyway, and then we had one where the dogs, and I don't like dogs, they started barking in the house. Oh. I said, I can't handle this. Blip, and I took, I took them off. I gave them their present, and I took them off. I said, I can't listen to that. Just watch the video. That's one of the reasons I can't stand dogs is when I was growing up, I worked with my dad, and we land surveying business, and whenever you were surveying a, a less than an acre, they would have like 500 dogs on the, the half acre, all right? You go out to a farm, 200 acres, they got one dog. You go to a half acre lot in the town, they got like 15 dogs. And I'm like, and all of them would bark. And we couldn't hear each other. And to this day, I cannot stand to hear a dog bark, okay? To this day, I can't stand it. But anyway, I'll shut up. Anyway, right there, make sure you, if you're going to use Skype, do not. Do not try to install it five minutes before you call me, okay? You need to go home, and you need to put Skype on today, Skype for Business. And 
Fine, I'll pull up that office uh, that office 365 handout in just a minute, okay? Registering on to my Labs Plus. We've already talked about that. Um, look for the link. Is bridge? Sometimes it says bridge to my Labs Plus. Sometimes it says my Labs Plus. I think I put my Labs Plus in it. Just click on that. Now, once you go through Blackboard to get to my Labs Plus, then all you need to do after that is just go to the website. Just go to tctc.mylabsplus.com and just put it on your desktop, and that way you don't have to fool Blackboard. Because we have people that can't get the, they're so hyped on Blackboard and they don't write down the mylabsplus.com address. They're sitting there on Blackboard and Blackboard's down. They can't get to my Labs Plus because Blackboard's down. All they need to do is just go to the my Labs Plus website, tctc.mylabsplus.com. All right. So make sure you uh, make sure you read this. All right. Let me get out of this and go to that Office 365. Oh, it's done log me out again. Damn Russians. Whenever you uh, mess up, it used to be Bush's fault. Now it's the Russians' fault. Anytime something don't go your way, it's the Russians' fault. Stub my toe. It's the Russians' fault. Let's go... There y'all is. My labs, what is it called? Get this thing out of the way. Office handout, right there. That's what it looks like. Do you notice how many excuses I'm taking away from y'all? I'm taking a lot of them away from you. Okay, now this is where you go. Here's the, there's the site right there. It's going to ask you for your password, and I mean, it's going to ask you for your username and password. You type in hmcclure at tctc.edu, and then before you can type in your password, it's going to hyperlink you. You don't even have to do anything. It's going to do it automatically to the TCTC website, and not website, but login for portal. And then you got to type in hmcclure at tctc.edu, which would be your email address, and then your password or your T number, whatever you use, and then it will install onto your device. Okay, don't go onto 365 portal with your cell phone and trying to put it on your laptop. It don't work. Okay. I had somebody try to do that one semester. Anyway. That's how, and you got up to five, I think it's five, somebody verify that for me. I think it's five free installations, which is pretty valuable, especially if you use Excel and Word database and PowerPoint. I meant not database, Word processor and PowerPoint. Those are three things that's worth it right there, not to mention Skype for business. All right, so make sure you do this when you go home tonight or tomorrow. Make sure you get that done. Okay. If you call me up and say, I don't know how to install it, I'm going to say what? I don't have any idea. Okay, I think I've covered pretty much everything. Oh, YouTube, I've covered that. All right, math, one generic syllabus. I don't care about the syllabus. I just want the last sheet. And that's the very most important one. There, right there. This is a sheet you need to take out and you need to put on the inside of your notebook. If you've got one of those notebooks that's got an outside plastic cover, this sheet needs to go in the front. If you've got a math notebook, okay? This is the sheet that you go by for the videos, for the test, for the homework, for everything. This is kind of like your Ten Commandments for the... Oh, God, I said Ten Commandments. <laughs> this is the Ten Commandments for your math course. This is the Bible for your math course. This is the manual for your math course. This tells you, if I go over 5.2 today, when y'all come back Wednesday, what am I probably going to go over next? 5.3. Okay? When we get to 10.1, what should you be thinking about? 
test. And what does that mean? That means the homework is going to terminate. Okay, that's that's why this sheet is so important. Okay, do not come in here and ask me what I'm going to be doing Wednesday. I'll say I have no earthly idea because I've told you, and you know what I went over today or whatever. No yawning in class. I saw that. We had a teacher one time that taught CPT, and she made a student leave because they yawned. If you yawned three times, she would make you leave. Of course, she got fired. We have some real dumbasses up here. Let me tell you. We had one. We had one teacher, speech teacher. Okay, you with me? He was blind, but he was a speech teacher, and he was a good speech teacher. But one day, he decided he just wanted to show a porn to a class. A porn movie. Got fired. <laughs> and I'm not even going to mention the third one. I'll just say this. He didn't lock his office door when he needed to. That's all I'm going to say. He got fired. Okay? All right. Now, you don't know what he was doing. He could have been doing drugs. You don't know what he was doing. I'm not going to tell you. He could have been in there dressed like a horse and dancing on top of his desk. I don't know. But he should have locked his door because it's stupid. We got some real dummies up here as far as teachers go. You think students are dumb? We got some teachers that are not so bright either. Okay, so this is the unit one, this is unit two, this is unit three, this is unit four. Your homework on my labs plus corresponds to this outline. So if you finish, let me ask you this. If I go over 5.3 today, should you do 5.4? Huh? Nope. No. Because why? Nothing You're right. not responsible for it. Unless I tell you to do it. Okay? Now I can override this just like I want everybody to scratch out 1.2 and 1.3. I'm not going to insult your intelligence by going over 1.1 and 1.2 and 1.3. Now if you need me to go over it, I will. But I don't think y'all need to know how to estimate numbers. If it's a 7, it's closer to 10. Okay? If it's 0.7, it's closer to a whole number. I, I'm not going to go into that with y'all. Okay? So we're going to start on Chapter 5. So you could go ahead and start on your homework, the reading, whichever one you want to, 5.1, 5.2, 5.3. I'm not going to tell you to do anything because I haven't even started any math yet. If you want to do that, you can. But I won't start math until next Monday which you do not come to class, so it would be Wednesday. All right. Now, on the last set, that triggers something else. On the last set, where it says, did y'all get an email called uh, email number three? Okay, that's the one that's got the academic calendar on it. You need to print out that academic calendar, and you need to put those dates in your, in your calendar on your phone or your book calendar because... Monday, we don't come to class, MLK day, okay? So don't be showing up, the parking lot's empty, the hallways are empty, and you come up here and stand in this classroom, it's dark and it's empty, because then you'll be looking like what? A dummy. All right, so get that academic calendar out and go over it and put some important dates. Last day to draw, spring, I don't even know, spring vacation or spring break. Uh, right, highlight any of that says no classes and put those in your what? In your calendar. Last day of class is April 23rd. That is a bonus question in your test. Okay? When is the exams? That's a bonus question on each of your tests. But you have to find them on the academic calendar. All right? So those, there's at least two or three bonus questions on the academic calendar. But anyway, that's what you go by. If I cover it, you're responsible for it. If I don't cover it, you're not responsible for it. If I say, okay, 1.2, 1.3, we're not going to do it. Do you need to go home and do the homework? No. Well, it's still on there, Hubert. You don't need to worry about it. You worry about, don't worry about the course. Just worry about loading the what? Cart. It's your parents' fault. Anyway.
Y'all have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Don't worry about the horse. You just load the cart. Don't worry about the stuff that I need to worry about. You worry about doing the stuff you need to do. Okay? So the next test, the, the unit one test, will consist of 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.6, and 10.1. So if you like to go home and get up on stuff, then you start reading 5.1 through 5.3, and then 5.6 and 10.1, and you can knock yourself out and do the homework if you want to. It's open. Okay? But I'm not going over 10.1 until I get to 10.1. So if you send me a question on 10.1, I'm not going to do it until we get to 10.1. Okay? And we're not going to do anything mathematical, mathematic-wise until we, until we get back Wednesday. Because i got to go over test, homework, exams, grading. i got to go over that Wednesday. Today's Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the most important question. I mean, out, out, hand out. Question. Now, your syllabus talks about, and this is a bonus question. This is one of your bonus questions on your test. And I didn't send that, so I'll write it on the board. As soon as I can get the board up. Now, some of y'all have jobs, and some of you have people that work above you that are smart, and some of you have people that work above you that are not so smart. Sometimes we have decisions that are made that are not, that we don't agree with. Some, somebody made the decision that we need to have in-class tests in classrooms. And I said, y'all are stupid. Well, I said it in the meeting. I said, y'all are doing nothing but making more work for you and more work for the students. And I said, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, you will. So I give y'all, I have to give y'all two in-class tests. Did they say what's supposed to be on the test? No, they didn't. So your in-class test is made up of five questions that hopefully you won't miss. Hint, hint. We switch them. We put our pets' names on them. We switch them. We grade them. Get back the pet's name, pass them around, you get your pet's name back, and then you put your name on it, give it to me, and I make it count as quiz. 10% of your grade. Do all of it in about 30 minutes, and I don't have to do all that extra work that they're wanting to do. So, there's several things that we have. We have homework, and that counts as 20% of your grade. The in-class test, that's what I call it, in-class test, or I'm going to put quizzes, because I put them in as quizzes, is 5, that's 10%. And this is the first, this is actually the first semester I have incorporated it into the grades, okay? <coughs> Because I was told I had to. They still don't know what, what questions are, so you need to keep that quiet. Because they find out that I'm giving y'all easy questions, they're gonna they're gonna mess that up. Okay? So unit test is uh, hold on. Unit test and exam make up the rest. Because I treat the exam just like a test. So, but but the whole thing together is 70%. These two together. So all your unit tests, just take your unit test, I mean, take your test and exam average and find that average and multiply it by 0.7. And then take your quiz average, which everybody uses them, that's 100. 100 times 10% is 10. Take that unit test, take that and add a 10 to it. And then whatever your homework average is, which you can find that out on my lab plus, the grade book, whatever that average is, you multiply it by 0.2, and you add all three of those together, and that's your grade. Okay. So make sure you make this note. Uh, I think I think in the in in the handouts are 
50% and 20% is the unit test. I think the question that I give y'all on the test is what are the weights? 50 is unit test and 20 is what? I think that's the question. So you need to remember this for the question. I think it's 20, 10, 50, 20. 20, 10, 50, 20. Of course, it's the only answer that equals 100. The rest of the answers don't equal 100. So now, let's talk about the access code. The access code, there's three ways to get the access code. One is to get the access code with your package with your book. Some of you got, I see that looks like a new one right there. Did you get access code with it? Yeah. Here's the access code. You open it, and it's either a scratch off or it's a rip off. One of the two. You rip it off, pull the little tab, one of those two, and there is a 16 digit code there. Now, please be careful when you're, some people just go all wild, all crazy, and take a take a piece of scissors or a knife and they scrape off the dead gum number. <laughs> and then I have to deal with that. Now what do you do in that case? You call them and they're probably going to ask you for a barcode. They're going to ask you to send a picture of this and then they're going to have to send you back code because they're going to have to pull it up using the barcode. So don't do that. Take a take a nickel or something or don't do anything sharp. And just slowly do it if you got one of these scratch offs. Okay, don't put too much pressure on. That's the first way, with your book. The second way is to buy just the access code at the bookstore. The bookstore orders five access codes each semester for 500,000 students that we have. Okay? So they only order five. So probably they're going to go out, they're going to be sold out tomorrow. Okay? I'm being facetious there. They, they never order enough. And the third way is when you go on and log on to My Lab Plus, it'll ask you, do you have an access code? Or did you, did you buy one? Or did you buy one with your book? And the last one said, do you want to buy one? And those of you that have a credit card or a debit card, click on that, and you can just buy it there. It's usually about $20, $25 cheaper than the bookstore if you do it online. So that's the three ways to get an access code. You do not need any kind of ID. You don't need any kind of class ID. That's the wrong website. So do not text me or email me and say you need a course ID because that's just going to hang a sign around your neck that says, I didn't follow directions. All right? Um, supplies for this class. You can bring whatever you want. Now, if you are on the calculated drill team, you might as well just forget that. We don't even need, we don't even need that calculator right now. All right, so if you if you had you if you carried that thing around like a security blanket, then our teddy bear, you, you just leave it at home. Because we're gonna one of the things that I found with students come out of high school is they can't read a ruler and they can't do anything with fractions. And that's all we do. This first the first three sections is nothing but fractions. And we're gonna either you're gonna quit or you're gonna make it. One, one of the two. And you're not going to make it depending on a calculator. That's why we got people with cash registers who can't count change because of those calculators. Okay? And I'd be dang if I would hire anybody to go on a calculator, to go on a cash register who can't make change in their head. But I don't, I'm not a person that runs a business. Uh, notebook, that's fine. If you want, what about a book? You can actually buy the access code and print the book off. We're going to talk about that Wednesday. All right. So if you want to think about just getting the book offline and just buying an access code, I think the access code is 100, where the access code with the book is 120 or 140, something like that. There's about a 40, 20 to 40 dollar difference between the two. How much was that with the access code? If you don't mind me asking. Okay. Does anybody know? Okay, if you went and got the access code online, it'd probably be around 120, something like that. Because actually, you're paying for the book and the, because with, with, you can print off the book online. 
and I'll show you how to do that Wednesday. Don't buy any books. Don't open any books. If, you, if you've already opened them, that's fine. I can't do anything about that. But do not open a book in my class until I go over Wednesday's class because I'll tell you how you can print the book offline and not have to buy a book. It might save you 20, 30, 40 bucks. Okay? Any questions for me as of classroom logistics or the handouts that I covered today? Okay? For those of you that don't have the handouts, just print out the third email. Delete the other two emails. Okay? There's a email number one and email number two. Delete those. Just use the third one. The third one has a couple of handouts on there that's what on the first one. So all of you need to look at it. Okay? All right, y'all get out of here and have a good day, and I'll see y'all Wednesday. Okay? Yeah, see you, Hubert. All right. Y'all gonna have to get off of that. I can't handle that. Yeah. Where's my... All right, I got to do the roll, and I got to get my son. Y'all have a good day.